Well, today was our very last day on board this boat. And this episode concludes our time sailing in Australia. midnight because um, there was like no wind in this anchorage and the boy was like knocking against the hull because there was no wind holding us off. That was fun. So I was like trying to tie the strop up. It was nice and tight so the boy wouldn't have room to swing around into our hull. And then at about half past midnight the wind picked up. Suddenly like the piece of mooring line that I was using was not up to scratch. It was like creaking and I thought oh that line really isn't Thick enough to be holding the weight of this entire boat in like 20 knot gusts. I got up and I took it off and then at about probably five o'clock I was woken up because there's like loads of swell coming into this anchorage. I'm really surprised. I don't know where, like it's obviously wrapping around from somewhere but we're pretty protected. We're in Stonehaven and despite being on a catamaran that does not make you immune to uh, the effects of swell in your anchorage unfortunately. But I need a coffee. One who's up early. God, it is windy today and that air is cold. Really chilly. It's very windy and cold out there. Yeah, I just saw that the, um, the knock that that monohull got as it kind of uh, cleared the, um, the lee of the land. Yeah, it, like, it just got knocked pretty hard. We've only got a little bit of jib out today. It's really windy. We don't have an anemometer on this boat, unfortunately, so we don't know what the wind strength is, but we'll play it safe. Hey, Nick reckons 25 to 30. Then the forecast was 15 to 20, but you get these bullets coming down the, uh, down the mountains around here, like down there. So you get like really sudden gusts um, around here. So it might be that when we're out in the channel, it might, calm down a bit or I might do the opposite and get windier so we'll see but just a little bit of jib out for the minute just until we know what's what yeah we've got a couple of hours of getting uh thrown around but at least the sun's shining at least the sun's shining yeah sunshine gives you two extra points on the bow foot scale <laughs> it's true I know. you take a full seven in sun and you only take a five in cloud so the channel that we're crossing it's got we're trying to get through it at just about slack, but essentially the wind's coming from the southeast and the tide's going southeast, so we've got direct wind on tide. So we've tried to leave early to minimize the effect of the tide. And having spent a bit of time here, we know that actually the winds tend to pick up so that they're at their strongest at midday. Are we going to have an electric winch there on yeah, yeah. our boat? Good work out there. <laughs> bouncy ride right today. Very bouncy. <laughs> Thank you. 
pass away that like creates a massive splash on the port side of the boat, I miss it. I don't get it on the camera. Damn it. This happened again. Are you still dry? I've got the wet off. Today was our very last day on board this boat and this episode concludes our time sailing in Australia. This is one of the most beautiful places that we've been to. Honestly, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Bird on a tree. Oh wow, I'm feeling very windswept and salty. I'm just sitting here. I got time. First of all, I think it's worth pointing out that we are so lucky and very grateful that we even had the opportunity to spend this year in Australia. Yep. Um, and on the beautiful C1260, which as you may recall, if you cast your mind back, a couple of years now when we're doing our boat review series um, was a favourite of mine when we went to Annapolis and we saw it for the first time I absolutely fell in love with it knew it wasn't quite right for us but I'm so glad that we've had this opportunity to kind of live on board for a while and yeah yeah it's been really fantastic so I guess I just wanted to wrap up our kind of thoughts about the 1260 and, and you know kind of using it as a liverboard and also sailing in Australia so Nick did you want to kick off? Yeah, well, listen, firstly, we've chartered these boats, so it's not, you know, we, we, we're not gushing and providing kind of like commentary based on us, you know, having a, a, you know, to say nice things because we haven't paid for them. We have paid for these boats. Yes. But both the owners of these boats we know, and they have been very, very accommodating in helping us kind of like set the boats up. So firstly, thank you to Phil. That's fantastic of you and Cheryl to kind of like lend us your boat um, to use. And obviously thanks to Pete um, for this, part, this boat, which again has been absolutely phenomenal. I think in rounding things up, I think we should just to kind of split this into into two i think one will be the characteristics of, of this boat at anchor and to live aboard mm. and the second we'll do about the sailing characteristics sure so um i shall let you start with the um the liverboard characteristics okay we've kind of touched on this in in kind of past episodes but i think it's worth just summing up um our thoughts about living on this boat because it it has been a real change from Ruby Rose. We came from a 38 foot monohull and for the last few months we've been living on this 41 or 42 foot catamaran and the differences are huge so that is kind of what I'm going to focus on. I have to say that the main difference I've found is that everything is just so much easier. And small things on Ruby Rose that took a few minutes were like a two person job are like just a 10 second one person job on this boat and everything's just simple easy everything just works you don't have to work too hard to sail the boat you can just kind of sit at that home station and you know furl and unfurl the uh the jib you can raise the main you can put a reef in all kind of while sitting there um it's just super super easy you know picking up mooring balls and anchoring is like it's just so simple we've worked out a way of having a, like, a line of communication you do have to open those uh, forward-facing uh, hatches so that you can actually communicate with each other but once we cracked onto that which was like day two I think <laughs> we're like hang on a second we need to be able to talk to each other while we do this and it's so easy you know everything's just simple and the fact that the obviously just the nature of being a catamaran you've got all the, this space upstairs this living space the fact that there is a kind of indoor outdoor living area here with the trifold door that is one of my absolute favorite features about the 1260 and something i'm really really glad that we're getting in our 1370 and that's made a big difference i think to us we've we've just loved that and being able to just kind of sit up and when we're relaxing in the evening or during the day and reading a book or whatever and we're inside we're not like down in the hull we're kind of up with a view of our surroundings and that's been something that i've talked about before that I really appreciate because you know that kind of connection to 
the environment that you're in um, to me is really important so I've, I've loved it I've loved every minute of it I've picked out a few little kind of details there that I've, I've particularly enjoyed um, that's not an exclusive list it's just my kind of highlights all I would say is that you know I think there's a lot there's a in the Venn diagram of living on a catamaran from a monohull and the 1260 there is a lot of crossover and I think a lot of things that you've touched upon are actually kind of like part of being of any catamaran yeah that's the, correct. the space yes <clears throat> I kind of want to deal with a couple of 1260 specific points mm. that I think are pretty revealing to to people that that, that haven't kind of lived on a 1260 sure. or spent time on a 1260 number one we are in the in, in northern Queensland which is the tropics so on an average day you know the, 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 on the hot days you're getting to like high 20s in Celsius yeah. and pretty humid so be, it, yeah. it is humid there's a lot of humidity and a lot of heat here those forward facing windows those big opening windows at no point did I ever think we need aircon at For sure. no point at any point have I thought we well, have to have some way of cooling this boat down yeah. The ventilation from those windows, which is your big thing, mm. is nuts. Mm. Even on the very rare days where there's been like light winds mm. in an anchorage, there's been enough ventilation through those windows to cool the boat down yeah. completely. There's enough ventilation from the fans and the hatches in the cabin to also for it not to be an issue. Yeah. So ventilation wise, there is a huge amount of airflow again you can close this boat up and we've kind of gone through different scenarios where we've closed the whole trifold door closed all the windows and it does fog up pretty quickly yeah. if you open everything up so you've got those two front facing windows open you've got this big trifold door open and you've got those two helm windows open i cannot think of any other catamaran that has better ventilation. Yeah, and, and that's something I'm so relieved that we're getting on the 1370. That was a big deal for me. You might recall there was a bit of an ongoing joke that ventilation was like something that I just could not stop talking about, but there's a very good reason for that. And it's uh, many years of living on board a, a monohull yep. with um, okay ventilation, but not designed for tropical so weather. So if you can think of any boat that has better ventilation, any catamaran that has better ventilation, write it down below. That's the first thing I love about this boat. Um, which is unique to the 1260. The other thing is, is the, the seesaw helm seats, the forward backward seats. Now I know that Leopard used to do them in the kind of, in these seats, like where the backrest goes forward and back. Oh yeah. They are super useful, they really are. Mm. They're really, really useful. And honestly, we, we, we've got a lot of the use out of those yeah. uh, at anchor. We sit a lot up at the helm seats at anchor, yeah. don't we? Yeah, yeah it's really, um, it's a great spot So to that's sit. pretty cool. Other things which aren't exclusive to the 1260, the fact that that table has so many different positions. Yeah. Either whether you're turning it or whether you're raising and lowering it, and it's a really nice place to sit. Mm. Again, things that are not exclusive to Seawind, a full size shower cubicle with over six foot head height amazing it's been so good like, and, and also just like the massive water tanks and, yeah. and you know things that as I said just make life easy you don't have to like sit there kind of counting the seconds in your head as you've got the water running thinking okay I'm back to I'm up to 30 yeah. seconds gonna turn the water oh, off now got I mean honestly I think that you know it would be interesting if we've been on we've lived on two 1260s I think I'd amalgamate different parts of both those boats to make my perfect hybrid mm. and I think that they both these boats have got distinct advantages over the others in certain things. This one, it's lighter because it does it's not as spec heavy mm. and as such it performs substantially better, yeah. noticeably better, yeah. despite the fact that this boat has um, doesn't have laminate sails on it. The other boat, um, far easier to use, the full lithium bank, the C zone, amazing. Those are the things that I think, you know, absolutely love about the 1260. All I would say is that it has brought us to some conclusions for the 1370 where we're going to change. So I think after living on this boat for this entire season, or these boats for this entire oh. season, <laughs> come back, come back. <laughs> the spirit of Harry Potter. <laughs> um, having lived on these boats for a couple, for, you know, the whole season now, there are definitely things where Oh my god, it's so windy. Just, there are a couple of modifications and changes that we are making to the order of our 1370 based on actually we know we want this done differently. Yeah. Nothing big but just tiny little amendments that I think we want to make. Um, do you want to talk about under sail? Yeah, look, sailing 
the, the 12 sixty has been an absolute pleasure. It has exceeded my expectations in terms of performance. Um, I probably didn't have particularly high expectations to begin with, just out of pure ignorance, I didn't know what to expect. First of all, the ease of actually sailing the boat, the fact that you can do everything from a seated position <laughs> at the home station is really great. And, you know, things that were difficult for me on Ruby Rose, such as like packing away the sail after after a sail, like I can do here because the coach roof is just, you just jump up onto the coach roof and then you've got full access to the sail bag and the sail, um, which is, is a complete game changer for me because that was like very much a neck job and now I can do it as well. <sighs> Everything is just so simple. The, the motion of the boat under sail is really comfortable. I expected to have to adjust to that and I, there was no adjustment needed and I think that part of that might be just in the design of the sea wind itself because we have been on board other catamarans before where the motion has made me feel seasick and I have like an iron stomach. I never feel seasick. I can count on one hand the number of times I've felt seasick in the last forever like since I started sailing and twice I've had that on different catamarans um, seasickness. So the fact that we jumped on board this boat having had a long time a long break um like between ruby rose and getting on board and all i would say is that because the way that the swell comes from the south and southeast and a lot of our transits have been east to west we've been in beam seas oh. like a lot it's a lot of big beam seas and you get that big roll and not just beam seas but like motoring into like real chop here like here in the whit sundays we've actually had some pretty inclement weather which has been great because we've been able to test the boat in different conditions and um, it's been pretty like what would normally be pretty uncomfortable conditions you know some of the time and we've just kind of sat at the helm at the helm seat looking at each other like okay cool okay so let's just do with sailing so this boat it has the self-tacking jib on it and a square top main both in dacron this boat because it's lighter it flies she really does fly yeah. again we um the other day we ended up in a, in a just almost a drag race with another monohull, um, both about 55, 55 degrees apparent wind, blowing 20, 25. We were both double reef main. Um, they had a full Genoa out, probably 110, 120%. We were on about 60% Genoa, so reef Genoa. We, we just left them for dust. So we were, we were hitting about seven and a half knots. Yeah, um, without any problems whatsoever. Yeah. And so, you know, and tacking through the wind and self-tacker, mm. pretty easy. But so performance-wise, it's great. I know that we did all those interviews with Antoine. Those fine bow profiles do make a difference. Mm. They make a noticeable difference to your tacking angle. And it's just reaffirmed that I'm happy to give up the kind of storage space in the bows for the finer bow profiles. Mm. So tacking, fantastic. Upwind, as good as you're going to get from a non-dagger boarded catamaran. In addition to that, we have taken a lot, a huge number of waves over the bows. Yeah. And you know, it has been pretty shabby out there sometimes. <laughs> but those waves coming over the bows, they all there's nothing, there's nowhere for water to pool. The fact that they are kind of like reverse slope down means that there is literally the water just drains. At no point are we like, okay, this is getting bogged down, this isn't draining. So the fine profiles do enable you to take waves and for them to you to shed them. This boat does not creak no. and we have thrashed it. Yeah. We, sorry, Pete, we've thrashed your boat. <laughs> but that's the when we've been respectful, but we thrashed it. It no, doesn't very creak, little slamming. Doesn't slam, yeah. doesn't creak, doesn't leak. What else do you want from a boat? <laughs> So listen, I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, that's the end of our season. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the uh, subscribe button because there's a lot of Catamaran Builder episodes coming up. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below and we'll see you again somewhere. Goodbye. Goodbye.